be very brief and just say that among the um, affinities that give rise to friendship, one of the most compelling is a shared passion for objects. Sheikh Nasser was irresistibly attracted to objets d'art, and so am I, to the frequent irritation of my nearest and dearest. It is through this powerful bond created by the love of objects that I came to know Sheikh Nasser. He responded intensely to the beauty of masterpieces such as this extraordinary Iranian candlestick, if I could have it on the screen, made around 1200, 1210 of the common era, probably in Herat. But as uh, three of my predecessors have underlined, he also responded to very modest pieces and this is perhaps a far rarer gift, probably the truest mark of a deep understanding of art. When Sheikh Nasser came across pieces like this half of a spherical incense burner, which I hope is on the screen, which would be called in Arabic a shamama, from the same period as the marvelous candlestick, he saw in his mind the glory it once had. He could visualize the faces at one time intact that the characters representing the 12 signs of the zodiac originally had. Like all people with a deeply ingrained love of objects, Sheikh Nasser was not given to discoursing about the art. He preferred to look, and look he did with a sharpness perhaps inherited from his ancestors roaming through the harsh deserts of Arabia and trained to be attentive to the slightest change in the environment. That sharpness went together with a genuine, exceedingly rare modesty, which do, do not find often among highly successful art collectors. I would say you never find it among them. It led him to conceal the sharpness, which allowed him to make some stunning coups. Perhaps the most sensational of all was the discovery of a Chinese blue and white dish of the 15th century, which I hope you have on the screen. It had been admired in the distant past. The Mughal emperor, Alamgir, had his ownership mask, mark drilled on the back Alamgir Shahi, and you have the date in Arabic digits, 1071, corresponding to September 1660 to August 1661, in the third year of his reign. Was it the obvious beauty of the Chinese dish that attracted his attention? Or did Sheikh Nasser, that highly cultivated man, ever fascinated by history, respond to the important inscription. We won't know because he never spoke about himself. But he certainly did not hesitate in the modest shop where the dish was offered amidst junk, despite a price set, I am told, at just a few dozen dollars, which could well have aroused suspicion about authenticity. For while Sheikh Nasser clearly had ample means at his disposal, it should never be forgotten that it was ultimately his eye that allowed him to make extraordinary acquisitions. He, just, he did not just see the objects as beautiful pieces, which they were. He recognized them as expressions of cultures. His, in his mind, which was molded by the classics of Arabic literature, probably fostered the love of calligraphy that he, that he had and that he admired on some of them. This calligraphy on many of the objects conveys concepts that were shared by the otherwise highly diverse civilizations of the Islamic world. They are often dismissed in the West as well-wishing inscriptions, which is probably one of the most idiotic ways 
of characterizing them. They convey concepts which are metaphysical, many of them uh, mystic, mystical, many of them Sufi, with notions such as, to begin with, baraka, which doesn't mean luck, which means divine grace, such as karama, which is a generosity shown by God to man, such as al-fana wal baqa, annihilation, and duration, which is a compl complex Sufi concept on which I'm not qualified to, to discern, to, to, to speak, and I won't bore you with that. If I may, I would just like to add one word about uh, uh, Sheikh Nasser. I did not try to portray a man who is extremely complex and extremely subtle. Some of you will be aware that was a profoundly religious man, which hasn't been mentioned, but he didn't discuss religion. Truly believers, true believers rarely discuss religion. It was too essential for him to turn it into a conversation topic. On the other hand, he was anything but a man austere by temperament. He had immense joie de vivre, as the French would say, a zest for life. He was all, always ready for, for a laugh and had a very keen sense of humor. More dangerously for others, he was a sharp reader of character, character and he sized up those who approached him in the split fraction of a minute, which was not always very comfortable when you realized it. But he was also fundamentally kind, which is rare when people are sharp. He was generous of spirit. He hated injustice, zulm, oppression, jaffa. All that revolted him. He would have been a very great reformer. Kuwait lost a great man, and I lost a friend. At my age, there aren't many of them left. Thank you very much. <laughs>